Hello again, grade sevens. In today's lesson, we are going to wrap up the lecture-based portion of grade seven science. And we're going to do that by talking about different parts of a flower. Learning outcome is to describe the general structure and functions of seed plants. All right, so uh, I have an illustration of a plant where I have uh, a bunch of different parts of the plant that are numbered. So we have one through 10 numbered. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through the different parts. We'll, we'll identify the name of that part and then talk about a little bit about what it might look like and then describe what the function of that part of the plant is. So let's start off with the sepal. So the sepal is usually green and Usually it's these green leaves that are kind of on, on the bottom part of the plant. Uh, before the flower actually blooms, usually the sepal completely covers the rest of the flower. And the reason it does that is because it's providing protection. So it pro provides protection while the rest of the flower is growing. And when it's ready to bloom, then the sepal usually just falls beneath. So usually it's just going to be a few green leaves you're going to find underneath it if the flower is actually bloomed. And yes, you do find it underneath the flower after it the, the sepal opens up. Two, we have the petals. The petals are brightly colored parts of the flower. Uh, and there's a, there's like a variation of different colors they can come in. Usually they're really brightly colored and they have re really nice colors to them because they want to try to attract things. Specifically what they want to do is they want to attract insects that are pollinators. So pollinators I'm thinking of are uh, bees, be like the, the best example of a pollinator. Uh, other birds can do it too. And yeah, that's the main point of it is it's brightly colored because it wants to attract specific insects like bees and birds. Part three, we have the stamen. Now, the stamen actually consists of two separate parts. So we can actually break it into part four and to part five. But generally speaking, what the stamen is, is it's the male reproductive organ of the plant. And it consists of two parts. It consists of the anther and it consists of the filament. So that's going to be the parts four and five we're going to talk about. Okay, so the stamen as a whole would include both the anther and the filament. And then let's look what the anther and the filament do. Okay, so the anther, that's this top portion here. So it looks like, looks like a little brown portion of the plant. That is the area where pollen is produced and it's stored. We also have the filament. So the filament would then be this part. And it's just a stalk that supports the, the anther. Okay, so we have the stamen, which is three, consists of the anther, which is this top part that stores and produces and stores pollen. And we have the filament that just supports the anther. The pistil, which is number six. Now the pistil is, consists of four separate parts, four separate organs. The pistil is the female reproductive organ of the plant. And it consists of four parts. We have the stigma, we have the style, we have the ovary, and we have the ovules. So look at each of those ones individually. Okay, so the stigma is going to be this part right here. Now, if you touch the stigma, it, it's usually sticky. Okay, you, you feel that like sticky texture to it. So we call it the sticky lip of the, of the pistol. Why is it sticky? Because it wants to trap, to capture pollen grains. So uh, 
I, ideally, what we're hoping that occurs is that, so this is uh, the anther again. So the anther produces a bunch of like pollen. Okay, I'll draw a bunch of dots to represent it. Okay, what we want to do is we want to get the pollen from one plant to then get to the stigma of another plant. Okay, because we can pollinate it. There's a few ways this can happen. Like one, a bee could land, feed on some nectar, and while it's, it's feeding on the nectar, it can rub its hair against the pollen, and it goes to a different plant, and just indirectly it causes the pollen to get stuck onto the stigma. Same thing with a bird. A bird could come in, it could, it could also feed on the, some of the nectar, and then while it's doing that, it gets, uh, it gets some of the pollen stuck in the feathers, and then when it goes to another plant, it indirectly gets that pollen onto it. Wind can also do this as well. If it's windy, then the pollen can just be transported in the air and it can, it can hit the stigma, get trapped or stuck onto the sticky lip of the pistil. So there's a few ways you can get the pollen from one flower to the, uh, the stigma of another one. We have the style. So the style is going to be this section. And all the style is, is it's a stalk that simply just supports the stigma. Just kind of how like the filament was a stalk that just supported the anther. Nine, we have the ovary. So this would be the ovary. It's kind of like a swollen base of the pistol. And within that, this swollen base of the pistol contains a bunch of ovules. The ovules, so again, this is my ovary, are these little tiny sacs that would, you'd, you'd find inside of the ovary. So let's just highlight a few of them. So I'm thinking of these little tiny circles here. Those would represent your ovaries. What do the ovaries have? They have female reproductive cells. Now, uh, I, I just want to quickly identify how the per, how, how the process of, re, of reproduction occurs in a plant. Okay, so let's say that we have uh, again our anther with a bunch of like these little tiny pollen grains, and by some means you have uh, either a bee, you have a bird, or you have the wind. It transfers this pollen to the sticky lip, the stigma, and then it gets stuck here. Now, what happens at this point is that a tube will actually grow from the stigma down to the ovules. So I'll try to sketch like what this tube might look like. So this tube will grow from the stigma down to, and I'll, I'll just draw it going down to one of the ovules. Now, once this tube grows from the stigma to those ovules, this pollen contains sperm, and then this sperm would just transport down to the female reproductive cells. And then you have the process of reproduction that has now occurred, or the starting point of reproduction that's now occurred inside of a flower. Okay, that is it for, again, all the, the lecture notes for Plants for Food and Fiber. Uh, there is a lab that can be completed. Uh, it involves dissecting a flower. Uh, I mean, if you have flowers in your backyard, you could probably take one, you could do this. Uh, you can also get flowers from the grocery store. But again, I'm not sure if that's the, the, the best thing to do right now to go out and actually grab one. Uh, so if you can safely access a flower, uh, then I would encourage you to do the flower dissection lab and I'll post the lab onto D2L. And if not, that it's, it's not a huge deal. Okay. You would, I think later on in grade nine science, have an opportunity to dissect a flower. Okay. So that's it for again all of the lecture notes and I hope you found them to be relatively helpful and then yeah we'll just kind of wrap things up by completing some of the work within the unit and I'll talk to you later.